Welcome back to another episode of Artists to Artists presented by Artists Republic. You are once again here with Nick and Christian, and today we are bringing out a great artist who is actually an Artists Republic user, Stanley Ray. As an independent artist, actor, and entertainer who was born November 4th, 1998 in Mount Vernon, Illinois, he grew up listening to music, particularly older music, from Al Green to Stephanie Mills to the SOS band, the Isley Brothers, and so many more. But this particular favorite group was Destiny's Child. In 2007, at the age of eight, he began making his own music, which later would become a series of over 100 plus demo songs he had recorded up all the way until he was 18 and graduated high school. Shortly after graduating high school, he moved to Las Vegas to pursue becoming a real singer and actor, but later came back home after a couple months to plot another move after things didn't go as planned. Two years later, in 2019, at the age of 20, he moved to L.A. and began looking for jobs as an actor while also finishing up recording what would become his debut album, Baby Boy, which came out January 4th, 2020. Following up the release of his debut album, he released more singles such as Tinder Linda Lover, Lavender Boy, Being With You, Wild Lovin', along with four music videos for each one of these. From there, Stanley continues to thrive in the music industry and acting, rising as a young, talented artist and actor in the entertainment industry, and an avid user of everyone's favorite platform, Artist Republic. So with that, let's get started. Hi guys, sorry about that. I'm uh, I'm not tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, man. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Not too bad. Just another another day recorded podcast with great artists. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> so yeah, so Christian, as always, pass the baton off to you. Let's get yeah. this thing rolling. Yeah, so Stanley, great to meet you. Um, finally, I've written a few articles about you in the last couple of months, so it's great to actually meet you face to face. I love to start these things out by just kind of asking you about your story. You know, tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you got to where you're at today. Um, to sum it up, I grew up in a small town, um, Mount Vernon, Illinois, and I've been wanting to sing as long as I can remember. Um, if I had to give it an age, I'd say probably four. Um, and uh, I started recording my own music when I was probably, I think I was eight. And um, uh, I was never a kid that liked excuses. Um, we didn't have money to go to a real studio. So I used to get creative. I would sneak and grab the family camcorder and the blue SD chip. I would wipe it clean and my parents would be so mad at me, but I would use the storage to like record my music. I would, uh, YouTube was like in its prime at this time. Like it had just kind of came out. And um, I knew how to look up blank instrumentals already at like eight and nine years old. And I was singing over them. And that's kind of how I started. And it went from there. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's, you got to love the hustle, especially at the early stages of anyone's career. I, I think a lot of artists can really relate to that in terms of like, you know, trying to figure out small ways to get their music recorded. Um, I, I know a lot of people that um, they would go into their closets, you know, surround themselves with clothes to dampen up all the noise and then just record their, <laughs> record their lyrics that way. And I mean, it gets the job done and it sounds a lot crisper than if you were to do it just like in an open room, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. You know, talking a little bit about that hustle, you know, a little bit in your bio is talking about how, you know, you move, you up and moved out to Las Vegas, some stuff happened and then you went back home and ended up going back to LA, you know, what was kind of that process for you in terms of getting yourself from point A to point B and then finally landing in what I consider the city of music, Los Angeles? Yeah, I was 18 years old, fresh out of high school um, and was doing the same thing that I came out here to do, but it just, it didn't work out. I came back after like three months, it was some issues with roommates and stuff. And then um, it was kind of hard to find a job out there. Um, I was in a group at the time and we couldn't even get down to what we wanted to do because we had to job search so much. And me being 18, the place that I stayed at in that area, they were only hiring 21 and up. So I was kind of like, oh, dang. So uh, I had to come back home for a little bit and I ended up regrouping and I came out here to LA when I was 19 or 20. And um, uh, I was already in the midst of recording my debut album and going back to the hustle part. Uh, I didn't have, I was broke when I started out. I didn't have money to go to a real studio. So um, I took it upon myself. I didn't like excuses. So I whipped my little floozy Android phone out and I had to just, I, uh, I had a recording app and uh, I recorded the whole album on there and just tried to mix it the best I could. I had no idea what I was doing, but uh, I just had to take a leap of faith and hope that people would like it once it came out. And I did that. Yeah. So, 
And I, that's a big point there. I think a lot of artists spend too much time perfecting rather than doing. Um, and I think that's like the biggest thing that like, just from your initial story that like, I think you've really conquered so well is like, just do it. Like yeah. as much as like, you can insert that mute, just do it. Like literally that's what anything is in life is like, you know, you didn't like make excuses for like, oh, I don't have money for a recording studio. So, oh, well, shit, right. I am out of luck. I guess I'm never going to be a music artist. You're like, no, fuck it. Right. Try it. Let me just try. Let me go out no, there. No, literally. Yeah. Literally, I, I wanted that. And, and you know, my whole thing is I'm never going to know where I'm going to go if I don't just do it. And then I'm not going to lie. My family wasn't really that supportive of me moving. And the same thing with the first time I moved to Vegas when I was 18. So, um, uh, coming out here was a hassle because of that too. Um, not really having that support, but now that they see what I'm doing, they were like, okay, you're not crazy. We see that you are really going after a dream, you know, but, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's all about just doing it for me. You know, you never know where you can go if you don't just do it. So that's important. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's tough to, you know, not have that familial support, at least when you start. Um, it, it's kind of that whole, I guess, a uh, cliche thing of like, they don't see it until you make it. And, um, you know, people, people don't trust the vision before the vision's a vision or before the vision becomes real, I guess is what I should say. Um, and, mm-hmm. and, and that's tough. Like how for you, you know, like, how are you able to deal with that? You know, I'm sure there's tons of artists that listen to this podcast who are going through the same thing. And, you know, I think it'd be really helpful for them to have that insight. I'll start by saying, I don't want to sit here and sound like this overly faith-driven person. I'm going to be 100% honest. I definitely had my days where I doubt it. And I was like, what if this is not going to happen? Oh my God. You know, and then, you know, money and having to survive out here, LA is really expensive. Um, so I just had to pray and try my best to just stay afloat. Um, I mean, I don't know, just, you just got to keep I don't know. I, I, my beliefs may not be what everybody else's is, but I pray, I meditate, and I just, I have to just hope for the best, you know? So if you're an indie artist out there and you don't feel like, you know, it's probably going to happen, I promise you just stick with it. Uh, you're human. Allow yourself to have those days, but I promise you bounce back and it's all good after that. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, I think that like, to some extent, yeah, it hits the nail right in the head is like, you always have to have that like big, bigger, belief of like what is what is getting me up when nothing else is getting me up like what is making you wake up at 5 a.m you're like okay let me go do this and I think everyone just needs to have that little chip on their shoulder like this is why I'm doing this Mm -hmm. um and, and so I fully respect that and so Let's let's go into um, you know not trying to self promote here, but self promoting a little bit. We know, and I know because I see everything coming in. You use artist public religiously, and so my question for you is like, how do you see as an independent artist yourself? You know, not just artist public, but any platforms out there. You know, kind of the the benefit to artists nowadays of having the ability to have these resources that weren't available before. Um, you know, how do you see yourself using them and really, you know, leveraging them to grow your career? And how do you think other artists can use them? Let me just say, I definitely recommend you guys to anybody. You guys are so freaking convenient, like seriously, like it is amazing. And it was a hassle for me because um, when I came out last year in 2020, I uh, started with Distro Kid. Mm-hmm. And, you know, no shade to nobody, but in my opinion, one reason, the main reason I switched over was because I don't like that uh, annual fee crap. It it didn't sit well with me. I like, you know, I feel like as an artist, you deserve to have your music put out there, your hard work on music, yeah. and nobody should have a right to take it down just because you didn't pay a fee, you know, that's, you know what I mean? You're taking somebody's work down. So um, that's the main reason I love you guys so much. You're so convenient. Um, but um, it's definitely more convenient nowadays to be indie because, uh, and to have a digital distributor because, um, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's a lot better than what it was back then, you know, streaming and I just, I don't know. It's, it's different. Definitely. Yeah. No, I, I get, I get that completely. Like I remember when it first started coming out, um, and it was, it was about the same, same range as you. I was a freshman in high school. And, uh, you know, I'm, one of my buddies was a music artist and he was like, oh yeah, I heard there's a way you can get on Spotify. And I'm like, really? I thought you had to be a record <laughs> that. And uh, I started digging into it. And the first one I ever heard of was Record Union. 
And mm-hmm. uh, I was like, oh shit, dude, like you can, you can, I can get you on Spotify tomorrow. Like, let, hold on, let me, let me hook you up. And, yeah. uh, you know, it was, it was crazy, but yeah, no, like there's, there's never been a time in the music industry where there is more resources for artists to say, Hey, you know, you don't go sign that deal. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Just, just own your stuff. Like for like five minutes, just take a step back. And, and honestly though, yeah. Yeah. honestly though, it's not that I'm not open to being signed. I mean, I could see that happening one day, but honestly, I am thankful to God that I could be indie and I'm in, I'm in full control of my career. I don't have a label behind me telling me what I can and can't put out, how I can and can't sing, how I can and can't dress. You know what I mean? Nobody's controlling me. I'm in, I'm in control of the will here. So I definitely love that for sure. And I, yeah. And I agree with that. I think that's the biggest power of these resources is it gives the artist the ability to say, you know what? I don't feel like I have to sign. Mm-hmm. Like I, if I'm not like, I feel like, cause I feel like traditionally, you know, 10 years ago, people were like, if I don't sign, I'm going to fail. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, okay, I don't have to sign. Cause there are these other resources available um that you know people can go to um and i think that's you know an awesome empowerment for any artist um especially um in so many different areas but you know as genres start to you know kind of switch indie i think it's really starting to be more empowerment to the artists and you know really what i like to call you know the future of technology is creator control there's a reason Uh i talk about tiktok is because for the first time ever, it's been a platform where the creators have control, not who has the most followers. And wow. you know, it's it's all that stuff is really is really where it's going. Um, but yeah, no, that's that that was my kind of. And I do I do want to say anybody out there, Indy, I promise you, it's not numbers. Numbers to me are not a big deal. I don't ever look at the numbers. Like my first uh, my debut music video for my debut single hit its first one hundred k. Um, what month was that? It was in February. Mm-hmm. And I did that indie and that was something to celebrate, but um, I don't ever look at the numbers, you know what I mean? Or how many followers I may have. And thanks to you guys, my followers have increased a lot on Spotify also. Um, but it's not about that. You know, it's just, you know, I just want to be here a long time, make timeless music and to touch people with my music. If I could save a life, that's bigger than any award I could ever win, any number one on the chart I could ever have. And of course I want those things, but I don't know. To me, it's about touching people and just having that longevity. That means the most to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I no, love that. I'm more that. And, and I think it's, it should be noted that like that kind of genuine approach to your music and your career is I think something that people appreciate more than the people that are out here talking about how much money they have and all this other stuff, right? Like they're focused on the numbers. They're not focused on being mm-hmm. genuine and actually caring about, what impact that they have. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, I, I think that's really um, commendable. So uh, just that's great stuff. Um, it's, but, it's a lot we could talk about yeah. as far as what, what's missing today in music. That's, that's a whole nother topic, but I mean, everybody's great. We love everybody, but I mean, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, one thing that I want to kind of, kind of flip course on here in this conversation, you know, like I said, I've written a few articles about you. I I know you a little bit more than maybe someone who's just listening, trying to figure out who you are. Um, One one thing that you really kind of pride yourself on is a big aspect of your career is your acting. Um, Tell me a little bit about that. You know, I I think that's really interesting. I I'm someone who also works in the film industry, kind of on the camera side of things, but um, I always love talking to somebody else who's kind of in it. Cool. Yeah. Um, when I came out here, like literally maybe like three weeks after my album dropped, I booked my first job on set as a background actor. And that was my goal. Um, I want to get into um, not mainstream, but like I want to be the lead role at some point in the movie. But I told myself right now it's just about the experience. So um, I've been doing I'm a background actor right now. I just love being on set. I mean, they feed you and you get paid for sitting and holding for eight hours. Like, come on. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, it's fun. And I love what I do. Uh, aside from singing, acting is something I've dreamt about doing since I was about four also. So I just love it. It's amazing. And I, I cry every time I get off a set and it's over because you become a family with the group of people that you're on set with. It's this amazing chemistry. And I guess you wouldn't understand that unless you were an actor. It's, it's something really magical that happens when you're on set. It's a beautiful thing. So I just love it. It's great. 
Yeah, it's amazing. Do you um do you have SAG ambitions? Are you trying to get into the SAG? Trying to get into it, yeah. Currently yeah. not. Yeah, it's uh it's tough, but I I know quite a few people that have been able to make it. Um, even just doing background roles up until they got, actually got into SAG. So um, that's that's pretty sweet. Um, and for you, yeah, you we're know, taking baby steps. Yeah, baby steps. But you know what? It's the baby steps that get you to the big goal. Um, yeah. One percent better than you were the day before, and you're there. Yep. Thank that's you. That's what I say. One percent. Mm -hmm. As long as you are one percent better than the day you were before, sooner or later, it'll happen. I agree. Yeah, and that applies to acting and music. And you know, if you're somebody who's doing both, those baby steps are eventually going to lead you down both paths. You might get to your goal on the music side before you get to the acting side, or it might be vice versa. It's just a matter of how much you're willing to put in. Um, and it seems mm -hmm. to me like you, Stanley, are willing to put in a lot to get what you want done. Um, yeah, which I think that's pretty great. Um, I at least try to go about it in ways that um, I feel will get me out there. Um, getting billboard ads set up that cost like hundreds of dollars. Um, doing the <laughs> little uh, <laughs> doing the little campaigns through you guys. I mean, any, anything that I could do, I'm devoted. It just it's all about the timing, and I'm really big on research. If you search hard enough for what you're looking for, I promise you, you will find it. There's always a way around yeah. stuff. You just really got to look for it. I promise you. And I think what's interesting too, I kind of want to talk about this because you know, I think you're the first person we have on the podcast that is, you know, really focused on both being an actor and a musician. And so, but I think that's intriguing because, and you can probably talk about this a little bit more, but like, there is something to be said that like doing both at the same time can actually be beneficial to one another. Because if you succeed as a musician, it can get you into acting. If you succeed in acting, it can get you into music. Um, and so like, are you kind of using that to leverage each other? Like, are you kind of using each side of yourself to leverage the other to help balance it out? And like, hopefully one will work and then get the other one too. Um, for sure, for sure. Okay. Yeah, no, that, I mean, like, I mean, greatest example of all time, Ludacris has been in every Fast and Furious. Like, <laughs> why? <laughs> like, right. there is no other reason besides just he's famous. Like, right. you, know, and, Literally. And, you know, so it is, it is interesting. Uh, but Chris, I know I interrupted you, so I'm passing it back off to you. Yeah, no, there was really no interruption. I think we're all just kind of having this good conversation about it. And by the way, for those listening who don't know what SAG is, that stands for Screen Actors Guild. Um, and that's just kind of like the main guild that anyone who's an actor is in. Um, anyone you see on screen is usually part of SAG. Um, that's cool. So let's kind of bring it back to your music and kind of you as a brand in total. Um, you know, one of the things that you mentioned that I wanted to bring up in the podcast is that you love Christmas. Um, <laughs> what's, what's going on with that? Oh my goodness. Y'all, this podcast is going to be longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> I'll keep it short, I promise. Um, I just really love Christmas, like maybe even as much as Mariah Carey. <laughs> like I literally, I eat, eat, breathe and sleep Christmas like um and it's a part of my it influences the way that I write it influences the way that I sing the way I dress the way I see stuff it, even when I get like a mansion one day I definitely want like half of my house divided off like one half is like regular and then the other half is full-blown Christmas stuff literally just because like it's Christmas all year round for me but it's it's just something that I love and I definitely wanted to be a part of not just my personal life but my career too so I plan on putting out like Christmas music and being in a Christmas movie I want to be in something like Macaulay Culkin has Home Alone stuff like that and, you know just just be known for that and have that one Christmas song that everybody can enjoy every single year for the holidays like that's definitely a goal that's a huge dream of mine. Listen, Christian, you got the filming experience. I got the directing, not experience, but I can self-proclaim <laughs> myself as a director. We got Stanley over here. I say two Christmas years from now, we bring, home, we bring the new Home Alone back. We rebuild Home Alone. Stanley's in it. He also makes the soundtrack and we just do it. <laughs> just go for it. The Artist Republic Christmas. Just go for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, I Stanley, I, I think that is a really bold choice to make as an artist to really align your brand with 
the idea of Christmas. And when I say bold choice, I mean that in the most positive way. I think mm -hmm. a lot of times artists starting out don't typically tend to make bold choices with their brand you know they kind of stick with the status quo they stick with what other they see other people doing and I, I think for you taking that step and making sure that your brand is aligned with something that not a lot of people have is going to make you stand out from the pack and I'm sure it already has um, and you know to any artist listening I, I think you know just on a personal level I think that create making a bold creative choice with your brand is going to help you stand out from the pack and it's going to just elevate your career that much more. I agree. Yeah. And I guess kind of going off of that, Stanley, you know, with your overall branding approach, right. Um, how do you feel is kind of the way that you take that approach, right? Like how do you make sure that, you stay true to what your brand is? Oh, I just do what I want to do. I wear what I want to wear. I sing what I want to sing. I write what I want to write. It's really simple. Um, uh, and I'm not, I'm aware that I'm not, I guess you could say like trendy or considered cool or hip, but um, I don't care about that. I don't care about being popular. I just, again, I want the longevity. I want to be here for a while. And in order to do that, you got to be authentic. And people can sense when something is authentic. That's something that a lot of artists don't keep in mind. So I keep that in mind and I'm authentically me at all times. That's it, you know? For sure. And, you know, you do mention like you, you don't consider yourself like, uh, what, what did you say, trendy or hip or any yeah. of that stuff? You know, I, I think any artist who's made it was never trendy or hip when they were starting out, right? But they've made what they do trendy and hit i mean look at <laughs> look at uh yeezy right like who wants to wear ripped up shirts and baggy clothes all the time and dad shoes but they did it and now everyone's doing it yeah yeah so oh and just, I, I definitely um and by but what i meant by that was like if you really listen to like my type of music, I'm and I'm really influenced by a lot of older singers. I love, I love me some Mariah Carey. When I first moved to LA, I had her debut album on repeat like every day, her and uh, Monica. But I also love like Bruno Mars, Aaliyah, Tiana Taylor, Janet Jackson, like people like that. And they influence my sound. So um, uh, I have a, I guess you could say like an older sound and that's not really like trendy. It's not the typical track route, I guess you could say. So um, it, and that's something that kind of makes me have to fight harder. Um, and I've, I've talked about that in a few articles too. Like, I mean, not all the time do people want to hear like an old school sound or something lo-fi or something R&B. People want the typical trap thing. Or if, you can't, if you're not a rapper, people may not really listen to you. They may shun you off and brush you off to the side. You know, I've dealt with that. So, uh, but again, I stick to being truly me. I don't worry about being trendy or popular. I just eventually, if I keep at it, I will catch on and I will find my individual audience that way at some point, you know? Totally. And like I said, that's the kind of thing that stands out. Um, it may not be what people want to listen to, but they're sure as hell going to remember it because it's completely <laughs> different than what they're used to. Um, I hope so. <laughs> and I, I think it's going to work out for you. You know, I, I don't have any doubts. Um, yeah. So Stanley, like we're kind of getting to that 30 minute point here. I want to keep talking to you a little bit, but, um, before uh -oh. we move on, I want to kind of pass the baton back to Nick and see if he's gotten anything that he wants to kind of chat about. Okay. No, no I, I was going to say, I was going to say, I saw we were getting to that point. Um, and was going to see Christian, if you want me to ask the final and last question before. All right, cool. I see, I see the sign. So Stanley, obviously I know you've dropped a bunch of great knowledge here. Um, but if you had to sum it up for any artist listening, who's going through, you know, kind of the same journey you went through and are on, what would be your one piece of advice for any independent artist out there who's listening? Do it, <laughs> do it. Um, don't listen to nobody, even if it's your mom and your dad, your siblings, do it. You have to do what's best for you, you know? Yeah. No like excuses. That. No excuses. There is, there is no other way to describe it besides do it. Just so do with it. that, Stanley, let us know, plug yourself a little bit. 
Where can people find you, learn more information about you, talk to you, follow you, give us the deets on, on where you are. And see, <laughs> I'm not trendy in that route either because I don't have like Snapchat or Twitter. I'm <laughs> old school. I just have like Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Instagram, I'm the real baby boy. And on uh, Facebook, my business page is just baby boy. Okay. Hell yeah. And then obviously, Stanley Ray on Spotify. You're right. Right. Spotify, Apple, YouTube, and all the other stuff. Yep. Cool. Well, with that, Stanley... Thank you so much for having, having on the podcast. And for anybody listening, don't forget, if you did like this podcast, make sure to give us a five-star rating or wherever you get your podcast, whether it's Apple Music, YouTube, wherever it may be. And with that, we'll see you next week.